Hi. Um, <laughs> it's a new uh, angle of the uh, for the lecture, and I um, got a little scolded by one of you guys about not um, editing. I know it's bad, right? I should edit. I, I have to edit, and I don't. Um, why don't I edit? It's a good question. I don't know why I don't edit. Okay, Pathwork Lecture number nine. I believe that's where we are. If I don't do it, I'm sorry it's so loud, but, um, but, 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 but here we go. Prayer, Meditation, the Lord's Prayer. Greetings. I bring you God's blessings, my dear friends. Today, I would like to speak about prayer and meditation. What is actually the difference between prayer and meditation? Many human beings are not quite clear on this. Of course, of course, with all such words, it is a matter of finding an agreement on the concept as such. I would like to distinguish them in the following way. Prayer is a prelude to meditation. Prayer is a prelude to meditation. Prayer involves the thoughts. Meditation is prayer involving the feelings and soul forces as opposed to the thought forces. In order to reach the second and advanced step, man needs a certain discipline and concentration which is learned through prayer. Many human beings are not used to working spiritually, but right meditation cannot be achieved without having learned the first step of concentration. When man has passed through the first door, he needs to realize that nothing can be gained without discipline, regular work, and the firm will to devote daily a certain amount of time where he reaches out for God so that the slumbering and hidden soul forces can be freed and linked up with the divine energy rays. And this can only be done by regularity and self-discipline daily, if possible, come what may. There are no really fixed rules valid for all without exception. There are human beings who work better in a spontaneous way, but only in such case, cases where, in spite of spontaneity, no day is skipped, even if time or location vary. As a rule, regularity is favorable. At first, man has difficulty to concentrate. My friends have experienced frequently that the thoughts wander, that something material, earthly cuts in. Then they panic, and because of the disheartenment, the disheartenment, they cannot find the thread again. I have often said it is important not to be perturbed by these interruptions, not to get confused or disconcerted. In other words, not to expect too much right away, but rather to pick up the thread quietly. And after a while, continuity and concentration will be accomplished. That is prayer. You human beings forget also in this area to ask for help all the time. You do not realize how useful this is. Why don't you ask? Help me to learn the real prayer and the right meditation. Or when you have difficulty to concentrate or are... When you have difficulty to concentrate or are confused, ask for assistance in that very moment. Here, too, the word holds true. Knock and it will be opened. This concentration in prayer is not only advantageous because it constitutes a training, so to speak, but it is also especially valuable because each thought builds a form. Each thought builds a form. And with the thoughts of prayer, you build harmonious forms. So that thought prayer also moves the favorable forces before you have learned the feeling prayer, i.e. meditation. You see thought forms, although they cannot yet have the same propelling force as feeding forms, feeling forms. Let me read that again. You see Thought forms, although they cannot yet have the same propelling force as feeling forms, they do achieve greatness when wholeheartedly built, when founded on firm will. Of course, it is assumed that the prayer does not consist of self-deceiving thoughts, but is desire for truth in itself. 
This is the first step on this part of the path. First, the pure, for, the pure force of thought through concentration and prayer. Then the freeing, the freeing currents. This brings along, to a certain degree, relaxed clarity of spirit. Then it is meditation. When man has learned concentration to a certain degree in prayer, the regularity and self-discipline connected with it, then he may encounter the difficulty of falling into routine. Finally, he thought he accomplished concentration only to find another battle waiting. Too much discipline, mechanical work, which makes prayer a chore. And then, and only then, is it time that you learn to make a way with prayer into the deeper layers of the soul. There are several means to do so. As I said before, prayer involves the thoughts, and it is formed in the head. Meditation is built up where the solar plexus is, which I generally call the spiritual center of man, where everything is indelibly entered. So if you can set these feelings free so that you are able to determine when to contact God in this way, then you have mastered self to some degree and also the obstacles of matter. Now you will ask how to link up with this vibration. And there I say all inner currents, all inner currents, which have been channeled into the wrong direction are obstacles. Whatever exists and broods unrecognized in the unconscious is a block. When man finds it difficult to swing in the divine rhythm where he feels resistance, he may be certain that such an unrecognized violation of the law holds his soul down. Self-recognition, self-examination, and elimination of all these obstructive currents are the only remedy. However, this cannot be done without outer help, guidance, and advice. And aside from this, there are no fixed rules. It is different with everybody. Each one has to find that nook within which emanates a wave of resonance with the divine current. I'm going to read that again because it's so beautiful. Each one has to find the nook within which emanates a wave of resonance with the divine current. Do not expect this instantly it may not always be achieved. Occasionally, 